Hello, dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bagg. We're on our Wisdom for Life broadcast, and this is a time we take to spend in the Word of God so that we can have the wisdom of God to live in the divine life of God. It is God's desire for you to enjoy the life that He paid for on the cross. Remember Jesus when He died on the cross. The Bible tells us that He bore away every one of our sins. He was made to be sin. And He became the curse so that the blessing of Abraham may come upon us. And when He rose from the dead, opened the way for you and me to believe that, call Him Lord, call Him Savior, and the moment we do, we are forgiven of everything every sin. Sin is removed out of our lives and we have the right, the authority, and the will of God to resist sin. And when sin tries to get on us, we can immediately confess to God that we sinned and and when we do, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we live a life where God has removed sin from us as far as the east is from the west, thrown into the sea, and he's chosen to remember our sin no more. At the same time, on that cross, Jesus bore sickness and disease. And we've had a look at the scriptures already. If you missed any of the messages, go and have a check on our YouTube channel. You can get the messages from our office as well. But it's important to renew our minds that we've had a look at quite a few scriptures already where the Bible tells us clearly that Jesus was made to be sin. He bore the curse. Remember Galatians chapter 3, verse 13? He's redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Curse, for it's written, cursed is he who hangs on the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So Jesus redeemed us from the curse because he became the curse. What we saw in Exodus 15 verse 26, that God is the God who heals. And why does He do it? Because Deuteronomy 28 tells us sickness is under the curse. And so He redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means He redeemed us from the impact that sin can bring against us. And the same way, the same day that He paid for your sin, He paid for your healing. Isaiah 53 where it says that He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. In the end of verse 5, that by His stripes we are healed. Get a hold of that. That word griefs is the word for sickness or disease. The word sorrows is the word for pain. And if we read it that way, He bore our sicknesses and diseases and He carried away our pain. And by His stripes, His wounds on that cross, We are healed. We are. Now, I'm going to focus on that again. If we are healed, you're not the sick person trying to get healed. You're healed right now. You are healed. If you're born again, you are healed. Someone says, yeah, but what about this pain in my body? What about these symptoms that I'm feeling? Now, that's in the flesh. See, again, as I said yesterday, if you do commit a sin and you confess it, you're immediately forgiven of that sin but sometimes there are symptoms that come as a result of that. So if somebody breaks the law and they get arrested and put into jail, that's the result of breaking the law. They can be forgiven. If they confess to God, He forgives them. They are forgiven. If they died at any moment, they would go straight to heaven. But now there's a consequence. Now the good news is that Jesus, when He healed us, we are healed in our spirits. We may experience in our body the consequences of that sickness and disease. So if I've been eating wrong or I've been in the wrong environment or I haven't kept my immune system up strong, then what happens is sometimes things can get in my body. I can resist that. I am healed. Me, the person's healed. That's what's in my body now. The Word of God can even work in our body. Remember, He said, yeah, In Jeremiah 30, verse 17, God says, I will restore health to you. Why? Because it's paid for. And then heal you of your wounds. So even the result of the sickness and disease, He will heal as well. Isn't that awesome news? Now, if that translation in the Hebrew is accurate, 
then it needs to be confirmed in the Word of God. Well, Matthew confirms that for us in Matthew chapter 8. He says here, when evening had come, they brought many to Jesus, verse 16, and they were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick. Now, how many did he heal? All. Now, you'll see that regularly all the way through the Bible. Every person, there were times that the Bible tells us that Jesus was not able to heal all because of their unbelief. So there were times that the disease was not healed, but it was because of their unbelief. But if you notice everybody else, anyone who said, if I can just touch him, I'll be healed. Son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want that I may see? They could see. Anybody that came with the leprosy and said, heal us, he healed them. Every person, not once, not once, not once did Jesus say, I, no, look, this particular disease you've got, either it was your fault or God's teaching you a lesson through this and this is not the will of God to heal this particular one. He needs you to have this for a greater testimony. Not once, not once. And so we've got no scriptural backing whatsoever that if we're standing in faith for healing and it doesn't happen, that we say maybe God has a greater will in this. I don't have scriptural authority to say that about anybody because when I look at Jesus, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, He healed all, every one of them, and He's still the same today. He is still that healer, and He keeps healing today. And that healing has taken place. And so, yeah, we see He healed all who are sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities, and he bore our sicknesses. There you go. That's the confirmation scripture. Now, I want you to notice something, yeah? It says that he cast out the spirits with a word, with a word. Now, why would he use the word? Well, have a look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107 Remember we saw you in Jeremiah where he said that uh, I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent His word and healed them. He sent His word. Now remember John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, that word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Word. So He sent His Word to heal. So this is a prophetic scripture ahead of Jesus coming. But remember with God, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the I Am. That even though Jesus was going to physically die on the cross many years from when this was spoken, in the realm of the Spirit, Jesus was crucified before light be, before the foundation of the world. So in God's mind, the crucifixion has already happened. He's already come and paid the price because in God there is no time. So the fact that Jesus would do it, in God's mind, it was done. He sent His word for that purpose, to heal. And here it is confirmed. He sent His word and He healed them. And this is the powerful statement. And delivered them from their destructions. Get a hold of that. He delivered them from their destructions. See, sometimes that's what the devil tries to do. He tries to put it on us that, oh no, this was my fault. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this situation because I did something stupid. Yeah, I know, that's happened to me. I've done things that I know the result when I've seen what's happening in my life. I caused that. But I'm not going to accept that as, well, that's the, then I must just put up with it. God paid the price for your salvation and your healing and deliverance, no matter what you did. In other words, before you knew it, before you or I knew it, Jesus already paid for my sin before I ever committed it. So when I committed the sin, didn't negate what He did, because the moment I learned what He did for me, I received and said, praise God, I'm forgiven of all sin. And the moment I did that, I was forgiven. Well, since you've been born again, since you've been saved, have you sinned again? I know I have. And now when I've sinned again, I go, oh man, 
I've lost my salvation. All of that, it's gone now. No, that just the same way Jesus paid for my sin before I knew about it. When I knew about it, now I'm forgiven. He's paid for any sin even after I found out about it. He didn't just pay for the sins before I got saved. He paid for all sin. So what I do when I sin, I immediately go to God. 1 John 1, 9. You confess that sin, He is faithful and just to forgive. Why? It's paid for. So the same way, when sickness and disease tries to take hold of your body, remember you are the healed. You say, Father, I thank you. At the same moment I was forgiven of my sins, you healed me. And so I am healed. Now the symptom has showed up in my body and I'm resisting it in the name of Jesus. And even if that symptom tries to cause damage in my body, you deliver me from my destruction. I don't care even if I did it, you deliver me. And he will take you out of that situation. And he is able to take that healing power and not only heal you where you don't feel it anymore, but even the cause in your body now can be restored. It can be returned back to your healthy body in the name of Jesus. Isn't this good news? Amen. Now, let's once again, let's go back to the scriptures and say, what is God's will? Because this is what's giving me the foundation of faith to speak this way. Luke chapter 10 the disciples, Jesus says in verse 18 to his disciples, he says to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Now that he's referring to demons. He gives you authority over demonic spirits and authority over all the power of the enemy. So not only do you have authority over the enemy, you got authority over the power of the enemy. And listen to this and nothing shall by any means hurt you. <laughs> now, if nothing, nothing, no, no thing will by any means hurt you, that includes illegal bacteria, uh, viruses, any attack on my body, nothing will hurt me. And I'm putting that in the same arena of sickness and disease. No sickness, no disease will hurt me. I'm taking that as a promise. Jesus said so. I've got authority. And so if I'm feeling hurt and pain and sorrow and, and anguish and, and physical attacks on my body, that is a work of Satan under the curse and Jesus redeemed me from it. I resist it in the name of Jesus. And I believe that as I stand on that word, nothing will hurt me. I really see that as a promise. I, I, I stand in agreement with this. If you can catch this concept, that even if there's virus in the air and people are getting sick and they, they sneeze, I've made it a statement of fact. I don't care who comes into my presence. I, they, if they sneeze and there's some disease floating through the air, the moment it hits my body, that thing dies. It's not allowed inside of me. It's not allowed. It won't get in my nose. It won't get into my chest. It, the anointing of God is strong in my body. And you can say the same thing. Say it. The anointing is strong in my body. And he healed me. And nothing will by any means hurt me. And that thing encounters my body. It dies immediately in the name of Jesus. And so now we're not even going to allow that thing into our body. Remember, Luke, that, that is in response. He said in Luke 10, 17, the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Sickness and disease is subject to you in the name of Jesus. That's why James said in chapter 4, verse 7, Now submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, very often what we do is we just like patiently and now sickness and disease has come. Well, maybe I should see the doctor. He gives me medicine. Well, I just got to take my medicine and hope I get healed. Oh, God, please heal me, heal me. No, it, it has to become a proactive resistance. Put up the shields. Now, how do I do that? Take these scriptures, build them into your heart, confess them, agree on them, stand on them, speak them. So when symptoms start to show up, say, no. I've resisted that. Father, I am submitted to your word. You sent your word to heal me and to deliver me from my destruction. I'm taking that word and I am receiving it. And as I receive the word, I'm submitted to you. Now 
devil. You address that situation. I don't care what has attacked your body, if it's a cancer, if it's arthritis, if it's a flu, if it, whatever it is, you address that thing. Say flu, sickness, disease, cancer, arthritis. Get out this house. Get out of my body. Get out of my home. Get out of my life. I resist you in the name of Jesus. And stand on that word. And you are submitting to the word of God. Now, here's the thing. As you do that, we realize, and this is what is something I just want to encourage us with and, and help coach us, because sometimes I can do things that cause sickness and cause disease, because today we've got more information than we've ever had before, that if you eat these certain foods, it's going to cause a heart problem. If, if you smoke these things or drink these things, it can cause a lung problem or a or a kidney problem, or a liver problem. There's, there's all these things. Many of it is self-afflicted. And so the, a lot of the sickness or disease, so it's like somebody comes and they, they, they're having heart problems. They may have had a heart attack. I can pray for them. God will heal that person. And He could even give them a new heart. And He's done that. Brand new heart, healthy and strong. But if they keep eating the way they've always eaten, then that same lifestyle will destroy this new heart. Does that make sense? Of course it does. So what I need to do is say God says He will heal you of your wounds and restore health to you. So now what happens is, let's say I've had a bad eating lifestyle and I repent of that. I say, Father, I repent. I'm submitting to you. I receive my healing. And now the healing power of God heals my heart. I've got a brand new heart, brand new life feeling strong and healthy, I can also ask God for wisdom. Say, Father, now I'm asking you, teach me. Show me how to keep walking in this divine life. Because what, how I fuel my body makes sense. It's the same way. You can trust God by faith that your car always runs smooth and always runs effectively and always runs accurately and always runs. But you can understand if we never service the car, we don't replace the oil, and we don't put petrol in the car, <laughs> that car's going to break. It's going to break down. I don't care how you confess, say, I believe this car will go further. If you run out of petrol, it's going to duk, 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 down you. You need to put new petrol in. So the same way, there are things in the natural that we need to do. So you believe God for healing. That's the miracle power. You're restored to hell. Now believe God for wisdom to eat right. And there's certain foods that promote a strong immune system. There's certain foods that promote health and energy and vitality. And then there are foodstuffs that will rob you of that. They will strip away energy and they will break down the immune system. So what is right and what's wrong? Well, as I said, read, learn. But there's so much out there. Some person they will say, food X will destroy your life. Another person says, eat as much of food X as possible because it's going to give you life. No, I need to listen for the Holy Spirit. He'll guide you. And I've, I've seen that happen in my life. I say, Father, teach me how to eat right. And I've looked at a plate of food and I know, no, I'm not eating that, but I'm going to eat this. Now, what that does is it helps you grow stronger and healthier in the natural, trusting God's power and anointing in your life. See, you can train yourself to do that. Hebrews 5 tells us, verse 12, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You've come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. I want to go beyond being a baby on the milk of the word, but become skilled in the word. Skilled. Now, skilled is by training. He says here, verse 14, Solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now that goes beyond your natural five senses. There's an inner spirit. You can hear the voice of God and have that trained. You'll be able to discern good and evil. And how's that done? It's by reason of use, by practice. So the more you confess these words, the more you stand in faith with it, you begin to train yourself so that you're able to do that. Now, tomorrow, 
I'm going to show you how to do that so that you will know how to train yourself to walk in this divine life. In the meantime, I've got something else I want to share with you, and I'll see you right after this. Welcome to Come Celebrate. Come on, let's give our Lord Jesus praise. This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us for Come Celebrate 2020 from the 23rd till the 27th of March. It's amazing to see how God has grown us and has gone from strength to strength. And so this week really is honoring God. It is His church. It's all His doing, and He's going to continue doing it. Can we just give Him praise? He is our King. He is our Lord. If you're outside the Cape Town area, book your tickets and accommodation and make plans to be part of this faith-building conference. We're going to grow phenomenally this week. That's Come Celebrate 2020, taking place from the 23rd till the 27th of March. For any information, please contact us or visit us online at alanbagministries.org. God is our healing God. In a time and age when technology has advanced so rapidly, it is vital for the church to continue living by faith. Now, this is a collection of messages that I've taught over the years. In this series, Alan Bag answers questions like, Is healing for today? And if so, will God heal me? He also deals with misconceptions like, does God Does use God sickness, use to, sickness punish to punish us? Fill your heart with faith, faith. and you better stand, stand against the sickness, sickness and disease. And disease. Alan Bag teaches practically on how to overcome sickness, empowering your spirit man so that that health can live out into your, into your flesh. flesh. In this teaching, Alan Bag will equip you with practical tools to live in divine health, as well as to actively combat and overcome sickness effectively. You can stand strong. So when sickness does try come along and try to take you, you're able to withstand it and come against it. Order the single teaching, Our Holy Spirit Health Shots, on MP3 at this price. If you get the power collection, then you're going to get this one for free. For free. Wait, wait, wait. If you would like to purchase the Healing Power Connection on MP3, we will also include the teaching, Our Holy Spirit Health Shots, as a free gift. Purchase these online by visiting our website, or if you prefer, contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries by making use of any of our contact details. This particular product is so vitally important because this is a power pack where you've got the whole of this teaching in one mp3 all the scriptures you need that you could take and stand in agreement with the word of god speak and declare over your life fill your heart with faith and you'll be able to stand against sickness and disease walking in the divine life and health of god now this week what we're going to do as well is offer this power collection this is a whole bunch of different teachings number of different series, 12 parts in total of so many different aspects of healing. Looking at it, is it the will of God? Will God do it for me today? Now, I want to make that available to you. So either you can get this on its own or you get the Healing Power Collection. You can have this free with that as well. And that is a power pack if ever there was one. Listening to it to develop your heart and make sure that you're walking in faith so you can live in the divine life and health of God. Get yours today and live in the health of God. Now, many of us have gone through life in different ways and different experiences and had different results. But the one thing that is true about every single one of us, we have all sinned, every one of us. And the good news is that Jesus paid for it already. He died for our sin, rose from the dead, and today is alive, proving that sin has been paid for in full. The Father is satisfied. And so today I want to encourage you, if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, do it right now. He loves you. He gave it to you. Receive it by faith. How do we do that? Through prayer. I'm going to pray that prayer with you now. And if you've never yet prayed this prayer, pray it now out loud. There, while you're watching, say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for my sin. You paid for my sin in full. 
and then you rose from the dead, and today you are alive. I believe that. And I call you Lord, you are my Savior, and right now I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you just prayed that prayer, I've got something I'd like to send you. This card's going to explain to you what's just happened. There's also some guidelines on you now that you are a Christian. And then this card will lead you through the Bible in a year. I'll show you how to read your Bible cover to cover in one year. Very easy to follow guide. And this CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure Into His Kingdom of Victory, is another CD packed full of scriptures that are going to help transform your life into a life of victory. Now, that's my free gift. I want to sow that into your life. Please just write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number. As soon as we got your details, I'll send that to you and I'll be with you shortly. Welcome to the family. Well, that's all we got time for today. I look forward to being again with you tomorrow. This is Alan Bag reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Wherever you're able to, join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're nowhere near any of our locations, feel free to participate in our services by joining us online at allenbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at allenbagministry.org. You are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Hey,